Hey, what's good, AP Macro students? It's Mr. White here with a monetary policy FRQ practice question. Uh, this is actually from a previously released AP Macroeconomics exam. Uh, so this is very similar to what you may see on the real AP exam. This is what would be considered a short FRQ question. Uh, these are really important to getting a good grade. If you're going for a three, four, or a five on the AP exam, you really need to do a good job on your FRQs. And they're almost always gonna ask a monetary policy FRQ. So this is pretty uh, par for the course for what you might see. So what you ought to do is get out a piece of notebook paper and try to work this problem on your own. Uh, you can pause the video and then watch how I solve the problem. So if you're still kind of confused on balance sheets and T accounts and monetary policy and all that good stuff, hopefully this will help clear things up a bit. All right, so the following is a simplified balance sheet from Meteora Bank in the US. We've got assets on the left side and liabilities on the right side. This is just a classic balance sheet. And hopefully you remember the basic accounting equation, which tells us that in any balance sheet, assets must equal liabilities. Okay. So in required reserves, we got 10,000. In excess reserves, we've got 5,000. And in loans, we've got 85,000. Um, what you'd want to do on your own piece of paper, I would go ahead and just copy this down. And I know there's not a total section down here, but we can just go ahead and write it in. Why not, right? Total, okay. Um, let's go ahead and sum this left-hand column of assets and see what we come up with. Um, 10 plus five is 15, and 15 plus 85 is 100,000, okay? So that means we've got $100,000 worth of assets at Mitiara Bank. Now, assets must equal liabilities. So let's take a look over here on the liability side of things and see if that adds up to 100,000 in that column, okay? Um, so we've got demand deposits, which just in case you forgot, uh, I know that's a tricky sounding term, demand deposit just means checking account. Okay, checking accounts. Demand deposits equals 100,000. Owner's equity is zero. 100,000 plus zero, this is pretty easy math, 100,000. Okay, so our balance sheet balances, everything is all good. Uh, so let's go ahead and read these questions and, and see what we need to do to answer each one, okay? The first one, what is the reserve requirement? So go ahead and pause the video right here, see if you can figure out how much is our reserve requirement in this example. Okay, so here's how you would find the reserve requirement. We've got total liabilities, which is equal to our demand deposits, 100,000, okay? We've got required reserves right over here, and our required reserves are equal to 10,000. What we'd wanna do is put our required reserves over our demand deposits, okay? So what we'd have here is 10,000, divided by 100,000, okay? Which would give us 0.1 or 10%, okay? Um, so what that tells us here is the answer to part A of our FRQ is gonna be that our demand deposits, or sorry, our reserve requirement is 10%, or we could also say one tenth. Um, either one of those would be fine. Uh, basically all we're saying here is that this bank is required, based on what we see, to keep 10% of its M1 in reserves. Okay, remember M1 means highly liquid cash. We're talking about demand deposits or cash money on hand. Okay, so for our next question here, Assume that Luis withdraws an amount of money from his checking account, uh, or sorry, assume that Luis withdraws 5,000 in cash from his checking account at Mitiera Bank. So the first question we wanna know is by how much will Mitiera Bank's reserves change based on Luis's withdrawal? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get us a blank page here to work with so that we can uh, try to understand what's going on here. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a T account. We've got assets and we've got liabilities. Uh, and then down here, I'll go ahead and put total. All right, so you can do the same thing here on your own paper. 
uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write our assets right over here. Uh, we've got our required reserve is $10,000. Okay. Uh, it says that we have excess reserves equal to $5,000. And we've got loans equal to $85 thousand dollars okay one thing we got to be careful about guys remember that these loans here are not physically in our vault that's eighty five thousand dollars that we've loaned out to other people and those loans are already out of the bank so we can't really count on that eighty five thousand dollars as an asset that we can use to satisfy withdrawals so when luis withdraws his money we can't take it from the eighty five thousand the eighty five thousand actually isn't at the bank it's just what's owed to the bank currently Okay, on the other side here, we can put our liabilities. We've got 100,000 in demand deposits. I'm gonna put DD for demand deposits, okay? Uh, and so here we can total up our assets, 100,000 and our liabilities also equal to 100,000. All good in the hood. So Luis withdraws 5,000 bucks. The question is what's gonna change? Well. Remember, there's actually only a certain amount of money that's like physically in the bank right now, okay? The only money that's physically in the bank is the excess reserves and the required reserves. I'm trying to draw a star, it didn't quite work, whatever. Okay, so in other words, when Luis asks for 5,000 bucks, there's basically two pots of money we can take it from. We could take it from our required reserves or our excess reserves. Uh, guys, which one are we gonna take from first? Excess reserves, right? Excess is extra. It's there for things like people withdrawing money. Well, how convenient. With Luis is withdrawing 5,000 bucks, we've got exactly 5,000 in our excess reserves. So what that means is that we're going to take 5,000 out of our excess reserves. Okay? But remember that if we take 5,000 away from here, that's going to change our total. And it's pretty easy math. What would be the total if we take 5,000 away? What's well, 85 plus 10? 95, 95,000. Well, if this is 95,000, remember these have to equal each other. So that means that we must be having a change going on over here too. This also needs to equal 95,000. If you think about it, Luis withdrew $5,000 from his checking account. So now we don't owe 5,000, uh, we owe 5,000 less or the bank owes 5,000 less than what it owed before. So now the bank only owes 95,000 in liabilities. 95,000 plus zero is equal to 95,000. Beautiful. But some of you might be saying, well, wait a minute, Mr. White, though, remember our required reserve over here, it's, it's equal to 10%. Hmm, okay. Well, if the required reserve is equal to 10%, then we need to do something with this number because now we have actually more than 10% of 95,000. What's 10% of 95,000? Oops. Well, okay, we've lost our balance sheet. Sorry guys, not sure what happened there. Okay, assets, liabilities. Uh, we said we have 95 in demand deposits. And we've got over here, uh, we're trying to figure out excess, hold on. Sorry guys, technical difficulties. Okay, required reserves, and we had excess reserves. Okay, and then we have loans, 85,000. Okay, now we're back to where we wanna be. Okay, so we got our total is 95. Okay, and then over here, we also need to make our total equal to 95. Um, well, we had 10,000 here. Remember, we said we had 10,000 here. So this is 95. Okay, but we only need, remember we said, we only need 10% of whatever this number is. Okay, well, what's 10% of 95,000? I'll give you a minute to think about that. 9,500. Well, what happened to that other $500? It didn't disappear. It just moves down here, moves down to excess. Okay, that other $500 is now excess reserves. And so you'll see that 9,500 plus 500 plus 
85,000 still equals 95,000, and then 95,000 plus zero still equals 95,000. So our balance sheet balances, everything is all good. We can answer these questions now. So by how much will Meteora Bank's reserves change based on Lewis's withdrawal? Well, the reserves are gonna go down by $5,000, right? All right. What is the initial effective withdrawal on the M1 measure of money supply? Now here's the key, M1. Well, there's not gonna be any change. Hopefully I can make that fit. That's an A. Okay, no change. And let me explain. And this is one thing that's really important, guys, you have to explain on the AP test. Um, the reason why there's no change is because remember that cash and demand deposits are all part of the M1 supply of money. So if you take 5,000 from something that's already part of M1 and you move it into something else, cash, that's part of M1, you're basically just moving something from M1 to M1, so there's no change, okay? So if you forgot about M1, go back and look at those notes about money, uh, because remember in, in the money notes, like right towards the end, we talked about M1 supply of money and M2 supply of money. Uh, those are just different ways of measuring money based on liquidity. M1 is highly liquid, like demand deposits and cash. M2 is less liquid, things like savings accounts that are not easily spendable. Now. As a result of the withdrawal, what is the new value of excess reserves on the balance sheet of Meteora Bank based on the reserve requirement? Well, so now our excess reserves, we said, hopefully you can see that's E, is equal to $500. And the reason why the excess reserves is equal to $500 is because, remember, we just moved it down here to that, to that excess reserves. Whenever this became 95,000, I'll just put 95K for 95,000. This only had to be 9,500, and that 5,000 was already gone, and so that's why we just moved 500 right down there, okay? Now, the last question is, is more of a conceptual question. Uh, assume that the next day, John withdraws an amount of money from Meteora Bank uh, that exceeds the bank's excess reserves. Assuming that no loans are called in, how can Meteora cover its required reserves? Well, all Meteora would have to do is borrow, okay? Um, remember, there's two places they could borrow from. They could borrow from another bank, and if they borrow from another bank, they pay the Fed funds rate. Or they could borrow from the Federal Reserve, in which case they'd pay the discount rate. Uh, and so if you forgot about that, then go back and look at those notes about monetary policy. It's in the part two video about monetary policy. Actually, I think all of this is pretty much in the part two video, except for the M1, M2 stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, uh, just go ahead and hit me up with an email or you can ask me in class. Um, and I hope this video was helpful. You guys have a great day.